Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Psalms 82, verse 4, as well as Romans chapter 4, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you for showing us that you're going to come through no matter what we think about it. You are God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you guys, Romans, Psalms 82, verse 4. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. All right. And so this is a part of um, a Psalm of Asaph. And so it is crying out to God, right? We know this whole um, Psalm is, is, is him talking about wanting to be vindicated, right? Wanting things to be made right. And it almost part of, partially sounds like an accusation to God, right? It says, rescue the weak and need the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. So, and we can see this in our everyday life, right? We know this to be true, how so unequal, unequal a lot of things are in this world and how like there could be a first world nation and then a third world nation um and how you can just see the stark differences in the two of them there are so many clear situations of like human trafficking and just situations where we're like lord when are you going to come through and that's kind of what this situation is dealing with this completion it's it's talking about okay god what's happening why aren't the 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 ones who are weak being vindicated why are the wicked prevailing what is going on with this why are you when are you going to deliver um your children out of the hands of the enemy and so this is conflated today with Romans chapter four, verse 12, and to make him the father of the circumcised who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. And so um, it says, let's just go through it piece by piece and to make him the father of the circumcised who were not merely, merely circumcised, so the father of the circumcised, meaning the father, the first person to circumcise themselves, to set themselves apart as being a child of God, right? And as being a person who walked by faith. And so remember, the circumcision was just an outward sign of what God had done in their heart already. It was done by faith, by just believing God, right? Just the Lord made promises and therefore he was going to fulfill his promises. And it says to make him the father, Abraham, of the circumcised who were not merely circumcised, right? Not just an outward form of belief, right? Not just an outward sign, not just a, a head covering, not just a, um, a, a way of dressing or a way of looking, but a way of being on the inside. So it says, who are not merely circumcised, but who also walk in the footsteps of faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. So this was a foreshadowing of what was to come, a belief system by faith, right? A belief system that was based in something that went on on the inside in our in our knowing of God, right? In our personal relationship with God. And then an outward sign for us, which would be baptism um, versus um, what would be um, circumcision here, right? So, and of course, this belief system also has foreshadowing of the tribulation saints. Of course, we've talked about this before, um, of a system that was um, not like the system that we have now, which is um, just of grace through Christ. Remember, they didn't have Christ. So um, Abraham was the type of Christ there in that situation, um, which all the men followed um, their belief after, which is just believing God being circumcised, believing God being circumcised. And so, um, but the, the tribulation, of course, is based more on proving yourself, right? So believing in Christ 
and more um, washing your own garments instead of having Christ wash you at that point. So it's um, it's it's a washing of your own garments in that situation. But here for the conflation, it is speaking about um, believing God, right? Believing God is a man of his word and believing that he is going to come through and do just as he said he would and rescue the weak and needy, deliver from the hand of the wicked, right? We have to put our hope and our trust in him that he is going to do just as he said. We have to believe that no matter how bad this world is and what it is that we're facing in this world and how low the world goes, that God is still a man, God is still a God and he is of his word. He is not going to allow his word to return to him void, right? He is going to rescue the weak and needy. He is going to deliver them from the hand of the wicked. He is a God who is faithful to his word, right? He is watching over them even now, right? Even if the, even if that point of, of, um, resurrection hasn't come if it's at that point of redemption has not come in which it will things will be made right and and um even if that second coming hasn't come which he will come back with his saints and and destroy the enemy even if those points have not come he is a god who is faithful of his word every single day he will rescue the wicked and the needy he will deliver them from the hand of the wicked and we have to trust in him for that and and you know know that our prayers even if we don't see them answered immediately even if kind of like with asaph um even if we are feeling as if god has forgotten he has not forgotten those are our human emotions those are our um our emotions that are based on, you know, what we feel and what we think and not on what is true, which is the word of God. God will come through and, and we have to believe, right? It's all based on belief and, and not based on what we know um, in our flesh and what we see with our eyes. No, this is a faith-based system and, and we are walking it out. We are laboring to enter into that rest. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We know that you are a God who comes through. Your word will not return to you void. We put our hope and our trust in your promises, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as their Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross. And I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this, Jesus. Forgive me of all of my sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you pray that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you into the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to show you the way. He is going to answer your questions and just help you every day in life get through the day. Um, He's going to show you a church home to join a place where you can go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus, um, as well as other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. He is with you every day. He is going to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's also going to help you understand how to make disciples of all men. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you his children his peace. Take care.